That's right. So I have yet to meet a happy denture patient, even a partial denture patient. What I meet is patients that just have kind of lost hope. So as humans, we're very adaptable, right? We can adapt to things that happen to us, our bodies, the circumstances, etc. That's your patients adapt, and they just kind of become apathetic to the whole process, right? Once they understand the differences between not having to take teeth in and out, what they can chew, because you know, as a, anyone have full dentures, it's here tonight. I have a partial. Partial. Well, I'll, I'll, with full dentures, a little, a little different. But when a denture patient walks into a room that has a buffet, and they're in a social environment, they're not looking at to meet the people. They're looking at the food, and they're trying to figure out what they can eat. <laughs> what can they eat? Right? What's gonna? What can I eat with my denture, or even partial denture? That's a that's a horrible way to live. But they adapt to that. And that's what happened with Rick. He, he, you know, he's like, a denture will be fine. And then, as he mentioned, it was cumbersome. It was not pleasant. Uh, after feeling what that was like and the taste, the food tasting different, it's like, this is not for me. And that's the beauty of implants. We can restore the natural function, the aesthetics, all the health benefits, all the taste and lifestyle benefits with that. So that's one of the reasons I love implants. Um, I do have a website dedicated to implants. Uh, on that website, I have a blog that I update regularly with different topics and things coming out in implant dentistry. I encourage you to go check that out. It has a lot of good information on it. So barryimplants.com. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, you can do is uh, ping me on Facebook, friend me on Facebook. I put a lot of stuff on Facebook, cases on Facebook, et cetera. Uh, happy to, to be friends uh, with you on Facebook as well. Um, so what I'd like to do now, first of all, thank you very much for your time, your attention, your questions. Are there any other questions? Was that Bay Area? Oh, Bryce, was Bryce awesome. we'll talk about. Yeah, that's why they're here. Yeah. Was that? Uh, BayAreaImplants.com. Thank you. Uh, is upper level has a uh, higher failure rate than lower level? So the highest failure rate in implants, because it is, we have different types of bone in our mouth. The highest failure rates is actually the upper back. Oh, yeah. Second to that is upper front, mm -hmm. and then lower back, and then the last is the lower front. This is the most dense bone in, in our whole body. Yeah. So the, okay. the poorest quality bone is in our upper back area. So yeah. interestingly enough, that has the highest failure rate. Mm -hmm. This, the failure rate here is, is a little bit less than that. The problem is though, a failure here can be pretty catastrophic, right? Because you lose a lot of tissue, it's in the smile zone. So these are a lot more traumatic than back here. So we, that's where we use the cone beams and the guides and all that, so we don't get good here. The front or the side? The front. Side, so the middle, like the premolars are in the middle, so that's, that's a pretty good high success rate. Back here is the lowest, but again, when I, I'm, I'm using relative terms, so when we talk about